Hello there, my beautiful and handsome listeners and viewers. How are you today? How has your day been? Mine has been beautiful because I have got a beautiful mind. You are welcome to your reality talk show, Beautiful Mind. This is the show that say no to stigmas, discriminations, and any judgmental attitude. On this show, we talk about issues that are considered as taboo, that people generally do not like to talk about publicly. And our aim is to let them know that they do not need to suffer in silence because beautiful minds believe that everyone deserves love and respect, regardless of their past, the disability, illness, color, race, or religion. You are welcome to your reality talk show. Why don't you grab yourself a cup of tea, hot chocolate, water, coffee, soup, whatsoever that makes you feel comfortable. Please sit down and come along on the show. And if you're coming back from work and you're listening by our online radio, please enjoy. Please drive carefully as you enjoy the show. Remember that you can connect with us here in the studio by dialing 079-603-91983. I repeat that number. And if you're calling outside UK, please put plus seven. 7960391983 remember that you can connect with us on all our social media and you can also watch us on your big screen right now at home yes we are live on youtube you just need to search beautiful mind tv and there you will find us so you can join us and please help us share this video because i believe what we are going to be discussing today is going to be informative and educative so please we don't want to be alone on this show we want you to connect with us we want you to be part of this show and the topic of our discussion today is domestic abuse you know we've been talking about this domestic abuse as a series and this week we are talking about the emotion emotional abuse about an um, aspect of the domestic abuse and we call it the silent killer well you want to find out why we are saying it is a silent killer then you need to stay tuned on this show so please help us share this video because i believe a lot of people are in the lockdown even with the uh, killer so please help us share this video and I have again with me, yes, both of them have been on the show before. I have Leona and Pastor Fola. Please, I will want Pastor Fola to help us introduce ourselves to my viewers and my listeners just for the benefit of those people that are coming across us for the very first time. Pastor Fowler, can you please introduce yourself to my listeners and my viewers? Right. I don't think we can hear Pastor Fowler. Leona, do you want to introduce yourself to my listeners and my viewers, please? Sure. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Great. So my name is Leona. I am a Newcastle-born Geordie Lash now based in Manchester that's what us Geordies get called when we're from Newcastle a Geordie lass so I, I um, 
lead worship for a local church in in Manchester. I, you can see by the poster behind me, I lead a charity that helps res rescue children. But I recently also founded a website and um, committed to educating and equipping victims of domestic violence and how they can one recognize it, two completely avoid it, and three get free from it. So that's me in a nutshell. Oh, I'm also uh, married, and I'll, I'm also a mother of a wonderful son who's 11 years old, called Samuel. Wow, thank you very much for that introduction. I believe we are going to go, you know, forward because we're still expecting Pastor Fowler to join us back. My name is Ate Yinka Adeomi for the benefit of people that are, con you know, coming across this show for the very first time. And we are broadcasting live from the studios of Beam TV and we are reaching out to all over the world. I can say that confidently because I know the you viewers are helping to share this video. So that's another key for you to help us share this video if you haven't. So we're gonna go straight into the questions. Leona, what is emotional abuse? You know, if somebody comes to you and they want to have a knowledge of um, emotional abuse, what will you tell the person just from, a, from your own understanding? Um, emotional abuse is such a wide spectrum of, of things. It can be anything from um, emotional manipulation to um, your self-esteem being directly attacked to being uh, controlled in your movements and what you can and, and can't do by your, your other half. Um, some of you, you listeners may have heard of the term gaslighting. This is where your own emotional feelings and needs are being um, diminished and put down as not valued and uh, not, uh, not you know, worth something. Emotional abuse can be name calling. It can be um, being controlled in your movements, how many friends you can have. Uh, what how you can be controlled financially as well all of this contributes to emotional abuse because often domestic violence is just seen as the, the punches and the kicks and the physical violence but whereas emotional um abuse goes much deeper it affects you not only mentally but affects you know the way your your heart is you 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 start to feel uh no self-worth your self-esteem hits the floor you you become subject to whatever this person is telling you, you you are, which can be very, very negative. Um, I recently wrote um, a blog to help people and avoid stepping into um, potentially toxic and violent relationships. And I kind of delve into this a little bit, uh, how to spot potential emotional abuse. I'll give you some examples. In fact, um, there is where, for example, if, if you enter into a relationship and it's going far too fast, far too quickly and the person is just lavishing you with really excessive compliments and overcompensating this can be classed as what's called love bombing and then all of a sudden they'll go cold they'll not want to text you they this is this is them thank emotional you, thank condition you very much leona i will want to stop you there that's fine I believe... <laughs> I wasn't sure I went yes, hard thank you thank you very much for that um i believe we have pastor Fola with us now Yes. Can you please, Ma, introduce yourself to my listeners and my viewers? Okay, thank you. Sorry about that um, break in transmission. I had to use another browser. Okay, um, my name is Fola Motunde, and um, how can I introduce myself? I'm an author. Um, I also run a ministry for women. I'm a pastor, and um, my engagement with emotional intelligence um, span way back to counseling women. I do not have a lived experience. Um, however, I really carry the burden of a lot of women that are going through the challenges in relationships. And so it's an area, anything to do with emotions and being able to be healed of emotional trauma is an area of my, of my interest. So um, I'm very happy to be here to learn and as well to share my own personal experiences and I mean, what I know in counseling people over the years thank you thank you thank you very much for that um introduction i believe you can see this this woman is a woman with many hearts but i believe she will be helping us and she'll be doing justice to today's question right you know i wanted to help us this afternoon how can you know somebody commit emotional abuse or who can commit emotional abuse 
Is that to me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. So first of all, emotional abuse is um, any non-physical behavior, is an attitude that wants to control, to intimidate, to, you know, to, to punish, to isolate someone. Okay. And it can be very, you know, degrading humiliation and, and it comes with a lot of fear in it. So anyone can do anyone. The question is that anyone can actually find themselves in that situation. If you don't improve your emotional intelligence, if you don't begin to work on your anger, you don't begin to work on your, you know, the fear that normally sort of births a lot of this behavior. Um, most of the research has, has linked this to traumatic um, child upbringing that sort of leads people to a position where they have so much bitterness. So it could be anyone. It could happen to anyone. It could happen to anyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Matt, for that. Um, Leona, what are the impacts of emotional abuse on survivors? Well, um, speaking personally, I know the impact it had on me. It was I was left as a shell of my former self. And often you see that self-worth really takes a hit. Yeah. that um, you see someone who's been through um, emotional or physical abuse, their they're, they're sort of how they view themselves or where they gauge their own um, self-worth seems to be really, really, really low. So that's how you, you sometimes see people getting um, trapped into cycles of going from one abusive relationship to another because their self-esteem is on, on the floor and they don't, they don't stand up for what they're willing to compromise for or, or what they're willing to accept or what they're willing to not accept. So that's, that's what I've noticed is a big effect is the inability to set healthy boundaries and to and compromise you easily, but also have really low self-esteem. Thank you. Thank you very much, Samantha, for joining us this afternoon. She said, gaslighting totally strips your ability to know reality. I love that, Samantha. Thank you very much for your contribution this afternoon. Right, um, Leona, I, I want to find out, how can one tell if somebody is being abused emotionally? Because it is an hidden scar that you can't really see. But when you come across somebody, how can you tell that this person is being abused emotionally? I think it's um, it's actually very difficult to tell if somebody's going through it. But if you know a person really, really well, and you start to see yeah. um, their confidence fall, and you start to see the, them becoming isolated away from their family and friends and their relationships, if you see them start to disappear, you can kind of start to suspect. Um, but my advice would be to, to not go straight in there and be like, are oh, you being abused? Because they're likely to claim <laughs> to their abuser, and you've got less access to help them Bring freedom. Mm. So what I found is, if you if you suspect someone is being emotionally abused, your bet your best sort of, um, you know, way to approach it is to just help them, encourage them, and make them see how amazing they are. Yeah. Help build Thank their self worth and their self esteem. Thank you. Thank you, Leona. We're still going to come back to that advice. So please hold that. <laughs> sure. Pastor Fuller. Pastor Fuller. What is the difference between physical and emotional abuse and how are they related? Because we've been saying they are, you know, silent killer emotional abuse and physical is something that people can see. What is the difference? Okay. I mean, you just said a couple of, of the difference there. <laughs> you know, physical is, you know, when you have, you know, for example, it's a tussle, there's a physical aggression, um, mm. It normally starts with altercations um, and use of physical force and contact. So that is physical. Okay. Now it's quite different. Like what you just said, it, emotional one, you don't really see it. Okay. And it's interesting that somebody just mentioned about, you know, gas lightning, because mm -hmm. what that is, is that, you know, it's a form of a spouse that begins to, you know, sort of a good example is a spouse that, shows affection and then abruptly takes away that you know affection for example okay so you don't know where you stand um another example would be you know sort of motives sort of qu questioning the motive of every action of of your spouse is just trying to get the person to feel that they are not right in their mind you know that there's something wrong with them 
So there's mm. ways of using emotions and feelings to put somebody else in a position where they begin to doubt their own sense of identity. They doubt their own belief system. They doubt their own opinions, you know? And, you know, a good, some of the, um, the signs is things like just being apologetic for nothing. You're, 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 mm. you're, saying you're sorry for what have you done? You don't really know what mm -hmm. you've done, but you're apologizing for it. So emotion, um, the reason why you, we, we're saying it's a silent killer is that a lot of people don't even know they're in, in that state. And mm. this links to self-awareness. And this week I was just going through some sessions with some girls, talking to them about self-awareness. When you know yourself and you understand your own emotions, you know, you're self-aware and then you can understand how people, you know, are meant to feel about you or react to you. And then you can identify if there's something wrong. But a lot of times, a lot of people stay in those relationships without even knowing that mm. that's what has been done to them. Okay, so wow. there's huge difference between the physical and, and um, you know, and Thank the you. emotional one. It's more difficult. I, I believe both of them are linked, but I think the emotional one is more, much more damaging, and it damaging. leaves you know a long-lasting effect on the individual. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma. You know, physical abuse does leave victims with noticeable scars. You know, it's not like a silent killer that nobody will see. So mm. many people believe that it does less psychological harm than emotional abuse. Ma, please, I really, really, really want you to help us this afternoon. Yeah. What have you got to say about that? Can you repeat that? Because I just lost You know, they believe that physical leaves scars. Whereas emotional doesn't leave scars. So some people believe that emotional abuse have less psychological harm on people. It's it's a difficult question because it depends on the individual, you see. Okay. Um, some people can have an emotional, um, you know, traumatic experience that sort of is real to them. Yeah, because they can even taste it. They can see it. It brings pictures into their minds. Okay. Um, and some people, what, physical, I think Leona can sort of probably ask, add to the, the, um, the, the, the answer because it's quite difficult because it's, it's something that is linked to the person's makeup, yeah? And it's linked to, you know, your own cognitive, your brain, you know, how your brain uh, actually interprets things, okay? And all this is based on your background, you know? We, 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 we've come a long way to adulthood. And a lot of the experience we have forms us, you know, gives us the identity of who we are, you see. So a lot of the um, the, the cognitive interpretation of any trauma or mm -hmm. any um, bad experiences will be very personal to the person because of where you're coming from, okay? Mm -hmm. And again, when it comes to the recovery of that as well, okay, it's also based on that because people will recover differently. Some people recover, you know, through you know, believing in God and praying and, you know, some people recover by going to professional counseling. So that, that question, I can't particularly nail it because it will depend on the person. So you can't say, oh, physical, you can, you, you get restored quite quicker than emotional. No, it depends on how deep it's impacted on you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma. Yeah. Leona, I have heard that emotional abuse happens more frequently and the most people don't even know that they are being abused. How accurate is that statement? I think it's it's very difficult to kind of tell the accuracy of that because there's so much undetected, uh, un, there's so many statistics that yeah. aren't recorded. And um, but I do, I, I would agree that um, you, you're you're uh, slower to realize you're in an abusive relationship if it's just emotional abuse that you're experiencing whereas of course um you know, a punch to the face is obviously a lot more obvious than the subtle nuances of pulling your your, your self-esteem down little by little and a bit more control here and there it is it comes in i know my own personal experience the emotional abuse came first which then lowered my self-esteem, which made way for physical mm. abuse later on. As the yeah. as as the perpetrator gained a bit of control, then needed to mm -hmm. up the abuse to gain more control. Then needed to up the abuse to gain more control, which obviously escalated from emotional in, in into into physical violence. Thank you, thank you very much. We're still coming to your story very soon. But is there <laughs> any excuse, Leona? Is there any excuse for ab emotional abuse? Mm -hmm. 
I believe there's uh, no excuse at all that people are in charge of their own their own actions and their own their own mouths and their own responses. Mm-hmm. And do, like I I even I wrote something about this because the worst thing you can say to a survivor is why didn't you just leave? And it's like mm-hmm. it's not that simple. Mm-hmm. And you know and and then the phrases of oh it, it must you must have done something to upset mm-hmm. them for them to mm-hmm. abuse you. It's not the case. Basically, no matter what. I do in my own behavior I cannot control the other person's reaction yes, response yes, no. they are completely in control and they have mm-hmm. chosen the path of abuse so that's my view <laughs> my view on that one thank you that's a perfect view Leona thank you very much Pastor Fola yeah. sometimes you find out that the abuser was abused or I've seen other people being abused growing up mm-hmm. so is that enough excuse for someone to become an abuser themselves there isn't any excuse at all whatsoever for abusing somebody else um and you know and the 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 the, the greatest challenge is getting help for people that have mm. gone through traumatic um childhood experiences um definitely in the west we have more awareness you know we 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 watch a lot of um you know sort of documentaries there's a bit of openness in how we talk about mental health issues you know how we talk about our emotions and you know but in some other part of the con- of the world many parts of the world where these conversations are vague they're not really nobody engages you know um, communities in discussing the issues of um you know um depression fear you know trauma you know even as simple as just you know you're smacking a child and leaving leaving a mark on the child when you're smacking that child you know the very aggressive way of correcting children, aggressive way mm. of discipline children, all these things, you know, leave, they leave their own signature in the brain, in the mind mm-hmm. of the person. And so it becomes a difficult thing um, if they are not even aware that that is where all the bitterness and the hatred is coming from. You know, so a lot of times um, it's the, the, we've allowed that, you know, the, 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 the feeling and the, to, to really mature into adulthood and then it begins to manifest itself in the form of you know shouting yelling anger there's so many signs that we can see even in in the household that we ignore you know shouting yelling you know trying to you know basically not equate what what is what the the problem and the reaction don't really match Mm -hmm. the extreme reactions to little things in the household but we don't pick that up so it starts from you know a young age experience it with parents experience with with family and a lot of other things that we never just pick up we just leave it as oh that's the way he is or that's the mm-hmm. way he is but then it becomes something that is uncontrollable and the individual themselves begin to live with them thinking oh it's just it's, it, it's just just me but that's not you if you're hurting somebody else you need to seek hmm. help you need to thank seek you help. yes thank you I, I love that mm. that's not you if you mm. find yourself hurting another woman being that is not you thank -hmm. you very much i love something chinaza or kk said here she said physical abuse will hurt us for a short while and we will forget about it but emotional abuse will stay with us longer even forever emotional abuse can lead us to depression and even can lead us to take our own lives and that is why we are discussing about it today. Yeah. We don't want to hear another person taking their lives because of being in an abusive mm. relationship. Mm. So please help us share this video if you haven't, because you might just be saving one soul by sharing yeah. this video this afternoon. Thank you very much, Inaza, for joining us this afternoon. Right, Leona, this is the moment where some people have been waiting for. Can you please briefly, I know you've <laughs> shared it before, you've done a video before, so I really, really want you to compress it now. Share your story, you know, for the benefit of those that are just yelling it for the very first time. So I ended up in a, a severely abusive relationship for, for three years, or a little, give or take a little bit longer. Um, I, 
you know, I, I suffered not only emotional abuse, um, I was controlled, I had to produce bus tickets, um, I had to give an account for why I was talking to certain people. I ended up um, being completely isolated. I mean, my friends years later were like, oh, that's where you disappeared to. You just kind of disappeared. The The former party girl that was Leona just disappeared from the scene. And um, I, I think I ended up in that, uh, that relationship because of, of low self-esteem because previous relationships were you know being cheated on time after time after time so my self-esteem was pretty pretty low and I ended up in this relationship long story short I I um I'll bring you to the you know one of the examples was there was um once I was on my knees begging for my life as he stood above me with a knife ready to plunge into my stomach after saying I will teach you today how to be a real woman and you need to listen to me and and the police actually broke down the door and I truly believe that was a miracle that if I, they hadn't broke down the door at the moment they did myself and my son may not be here to tell the tale and it was um it was only I I believe that it was my mother's instinct to protect my child that helped me get out of that situation because so often a, we get kind of like stuck in a bubble of false reality that we don't realize what's actually happening to us as a coping mechanism. Leona, I, I, need, I needed to oh, take a pause there. Did <laughs> sorry. that happen I, in United Kingdom? Because sometimes when we are sharing this story, they believe mm -hmm. is in an area where, you know, people are not exposed. It can never happen in the Western world. Where did you experience that, please? Newcastle upon Tyne. Is where I experienced that here in the UK. Hmm. It, it was uh, yes, it was in, it was in the UK, and you know what? Um, I wasn't alone. There's so many, so many women. When I went on a course afterwards, um, to help me get through it, I'll mention that later. Um, there were so many women that have experienced it, all from the UK, all local. You know, there is dedicated um services in different cities because it's such a big problem. But yes, so the police broke down the door. Um, myself and my son are alive to tell the tale today. I mean, I experienced my nose broken off door frames, whipped with a belt. I'm sorry, my family, if you're, <laughs> you're listening to this for the first time. Um, I would. I used to work for a school with for, uh, severely autistic young adults, and I would have bruises on my arms here. And of course, in that profession, you sometimes uh, you sometimes sustain that those kind of injuries. So I had a, a an interesting excuse for all the bruises on my arms where I'd been grabbed or grabbed. That oh work hazard. What happened? We had to restrain, and uh, my fa so that I kind of like bluffed it. So my family eh, didn't really catch on till till much later down the line. So I, I suffered be it like I had a butter knife across my mouth and shoelaces and dragged across the floor by my hair I got I even got head gutted whilst holding my newborn baby mm -hmm. and uh, so I, I experienced severe traumatic uh, physical violence and but I'm that's like a decade ago now and it, you can probably tell by the smile on my face I have overcome uh, all the trauma attached to it and then I'm here to to tell people listening if you're in in it you can get out and there is there is freedom thank you thank you very much for taking that bold step to be able to share this again i am so sorry if it has triggered something in you you know but you're being brave this afternoon because i believe you are setting another woman free or another man because men do go through this as, as well even though we we focus too much on on ladies or women we don't really talk about men or because men don't really come out to talk about their experience but please if you are going through any kind of abuse Chinaza, one of our viewers just mentioned that she went through another kind of abuse. So I don't know what kind of abuse that you are experiencing at the moment. I just want you to know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Please, your life is more important yeah. than you staying in that abusive relationship or a violent environment. Please, please. This is what we're saying this afternoon. And if you're watching us this afternoon and you're thinking, I am not in an abusive relationship, I have not experienced this, please help us share this video because I believe somebody on your wall might just be blessed by you sharing it. Thank you very much, Leonel, for sharing that with us. Right, Pastor Amotinde, is it true that it is 
difficult to spot emotional abuse signs during courtship now this is during courtship before people actually get into the marriage is it difficult to spot the abuse um i don't think it's difficult to spot the uh, abuse um however you know you always have to look at it from where this person this you are in that relationship where you are in your own emotional you know intelligence in your own awareness of yourself okay and what leona has been talking about you can see he spoke about control okay mm -hmm. and those things normally come through in a very subtle way during courtship you know mm. so if somebody obsesses you are just you are caught in and he obsesses or she obsesses about where you are who are you talking to those th those things those traits actually happens during courtship as well okay not only when you've gone into marriage those sort of traits act, act, actually happen during courtship control you know um not telling the truth manipulating um you know all these things are sort of part of that person because it's part of their their own makeup so they don't really need to wait until you get married before they show you that okay and i always say to young people you know make sure you give a, a, a lot of time i i i don't doubt her, um love at first sight uh, but mm. there's also um having sight <laughs> regards to the character of the person okay the character Thank of the person you. that you want to you want to sort of spend the rest of your life with so but mm -hmm. you know like everything else there is no formula there is no mm -hmm. recipe everything mm. in life is a risk and mm -hmm. that doesn't stop people from still coming together to fall in love. However, mm. you just need to take the issue of your emotional um, stability and your intelligence. You have to take it seriously. And both of you need to talk about that. So things about arguments, you know, raising the voice, just, you know, rubbishing you in front of your girlfriends. That is a sign. Mm. That's a huge sign. No respect, you know, mm. talks to you anyhow in front of your mom, even though you're dating. Those things are already, for me, they are, you know, really, um, you, you should be flagging them and thinking, this is the sort of person I want to spend the rest of my the life rest with. Of my life, please. I believe thank you. those traits thank are you. always there. I, I love, thank you very much, Ma. I love something Ruth and um, Tari wrote on Facebook. Tari, um, Ruth said, it is not difficult to spot the abuse, but most people tend to ignore the red flags That's it. and thinking it is not major mm. even thinking the abuser will change once they know how good they are i love that thinking so is going to change or you are going to change the person wow tari said it is not difficult to support the abuse the it is written on the word That's but it. Somehow we convince ourselves mm -hmm. it is just a passing phase. Mm. We make excuse for the bad, bad be behavior. behavior. Mm. I love that you spot mm. on. Please, another thing that people say is they are being blind with love. <laughs> the emotions is everywhere. They just they convince within themselves that this person is the one for me. You know, there are clearer signs and red flags. It's important to lend them like your back and Thank you, Benedict. Thank you. Thank you very much. I spotted red flags, but choose to still go due to low self-esteem. Wow. That's a very strong one. Yeah. That's a very strong one. And this is what Leona and Fola has been sharing with us this afternoon that sometimes when you have low self-esteem you can just give yourself cheaply to people because That's you it. don't know your what mm -hmm. you know girls women as you're watching me this afternoon i want you to look at yourself and say i am a diamond i am a gold and nobody can get access to a diamond without working for it so please from today, stop giving yourself cheaply to people because you want something in the end of your makeup. Thank you. Thank you very much for all your comments. Please keep coming, keep letting the comment come in and help us to share this video because I believe what you're sharing with us this afternoon, some people need to hear about it. Right. 
and I call you an emotional intelligent expert, Pastor Fola. So I really want you to give us some tips on how to spot emotional abuse in a relationship. Okay. Um, it's, 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 a, it's, it's, I'm going to go through a few things. Okay. Um, most of the time we've already covered a lot of them actually, you know, which, mm -hmm. um, Leo, Leona has also said, you know, the, the typical examples are things like, you know, uh, isolating this person, you isolate, you isolate and you can't see your family anymore because you are married mm -hmm. does not mean you, you, you have to cut off your, your whole family. As soon as you start seeing the sign of something, he doesn't want you to see your family, doesn't want to see your mom, doesn't want to see your friends, you know, is threatened by your brothers or your, there is a problem. You need to begin to think about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, another one that I will flag is withholding affection and emo emotional support. So mm. there are cases where, you know, you know, what should happen in marriages if somebody is weak, somebody is sick, the other will mm. take care. Well, the other will be concerned the other will support but mm -hmm. you're in a relationship where whether you 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 woke up in the morning or you actually do not even return home from work nobody mm -hmm. cares there is a problem there okay that is a sign because there is no emotional support there's no affection you know mm -hmm. i'm saying it in the, in the is, is is all bundled together so it does, it's not mm -hmm. because it happens one off when we're mm -hmm. talking about emotional um you know abuse is something mm -hmm. that, that has a pattern is a behavior that has a pattern over time it repeats itself it's not mm -hmm. a one-off situation okay another thing i want to mention is about the naming the shaming the mm -hmm. intense sarcasm you know sabotage mm -hmm. you know insult name calling mm -hmm. all these things you know again it's it's pointing to a subtle way to demean that person you know to strip them of their identity strip them of their self-worth you know and dignity now that is not a healthy relationship to be in that is not a healthy relationship because once you begin to look into you know i um leona said something that i just sort of make a note she said false reality and mm. some other people put a comment on 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 there as well on the chat that mm -hmm. you know when you try to you just want to say it should go away it's not it's not happening you are in mm. this world and you think no it, it is happening and it's happening to you and you know the example of it starting with emotional abuse and then going into the physical abuse it's real okay so all these are the things that we need to make sure we um we, we, we get help. Once you start seeing a repetition of all the things I've mentioned, you know, um, there's some people that also, you know, the withholding of financial resources, you know, you, mm. the wife doesn't have a job and then she has to beg and cry to get a five pound note, just mm. oppression. All these things, you know, they, 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 they basically, uh, you know, make the person little, make mm. them insignificant, make, you know, mm. strip them of their dignity. OK, and that is why we are saying you need to get help now and stop giving excuses. OK, that we both the, um, you know, the, 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 the abuser can find help. OK, and the person that's gone through the, 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 the turmoil and the, the challenges of emotional abuse can also find help. And that's why we're saying this, because it escalates. You don't want it to escalate, mm -hmm. you know. Thank so you. These are all the things that we need to keep an eye on. When we're talking Thank about, you, you know, um, Thank you. I, I love where you, you landed. I, I love what you said. There is help for everyone. So even if you've been in an abusive, mm. you know, relationship for a very long time, there is help available for you. And if you think all your life you, you, you've been abusing people and you don't know any other way, you don't know how to get help, this afternoon we are reaching out to you yeah. and letting you know that there is help please come out and seek help that is what we are saying this afternoon leona i believe you you had a child in that relationship can you please share with us this afternoon what is the impact of emotional abuse on children well um thankfully i got out quick so i completely minimize the um, effect of the abuse I suffered on my child because I took him and ran <laughs> fast. But unfortunately, um, it's, I mentioned a bit earlier that my mother's instinct took over to protect him, get him out of there. So he, in his living memory, he won't have 
any living memory of that, but I, I do understand wow. that. This, the, I do understand that there are people um, who, unfortunately, children have experienced it. I know people, I know grown ups now who experience um, that situation as their parents were abusive. And it does have, um, it has um, effects, trauma, trauma effects of those circumstances. It can affect how they bond to people, how they interact in their own relationships, how their self esteem is themselves. They can have a sort of a skewed view of what healthy relationship and healthy boundaries look like. Mm. There's a long list of effects of what it has on children. So um, it's often people think, oh, we, we need to stay together because it's better for the children that we're, mm. that we're together. When in mm. fact, it's actually better you're not. If the relationship yes, is toxic and abusive, it's better for your child not to be in that Thank situation. You. Thank you. Thank you. I love that beat that you've just said. Please do not say you are staying in an abusive relationship because of your child or because of your children, because you're not helping them. You think you are, but you're not, because they will come out and be an abuser themselves. And we don't want that for the children. We don't want the cycle to, to continue. We want to break this cycle. And this is why we are doing this show this afternoon. Right, Mabel, when she saw one of our story and she saw that we are treating, you know, domestic violence from Uganda, she sent us um, a question and want us to ask our guest. I am in this relationship because I don't want to be stigmatized. The man who's supposed to protect me has turned me into his punching bag. He treats his dog better than me, better than the way he treats me. Um, my heart is no longer with him, but I am afraid of a future without him. People may say that I am not patient enough. Will you marry me at my age? I am totally confused. Wow. What advice have you got for this lady, um, Pastor Fola? Okay. First of all, I want to say to you that a life living is, is worth living well. You are in a prison, the prison of fear. Hmm. And you can get out of that prison. You can get out of that prison. Okay. And you need help. And I'm so glad that you are able to put that down because sometimes it's so difficult for people to even write it down. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you've started to write it down is a good way to start helping your, yourself and your mind to begin to navigate how you're going to get out of that situation, okay? So you are worth more than the pain that is, 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 is given you. you. Your life is worth more. And, you know, even with your children, you know, if you have children, your life is worth more. Uh, and you have a lot to give to those children than what you're giving them now. I want you to know that under that, that situation, you are not performing at your best. Hmm. Under that situation, you are losing out on your purpose in life because your life is consumed with the hmm. pain and with the pressure. But you can come out. Okay, it's a process. It's not. Hmm. It's, there's no magic wand around that. Mm -hmm. But it starts with you talking. So I want to encourage you. The first thing I want you to do is look for a trusted friend. I said trusted friend hmm. to start confiding in to start talking about this. You are not the only one there. I mean, we mm. know we are not the only one. Don't ever think you are alone in that situation. No, a lot of people have experienced it and they're living their best life now, okay? So whatever, we don't know how long we've got left in this world, but why don't you make it the best time of your life, whatever you have left? You need to come out of that situation. Start mm. by talking about it. The more you talk about it, the more you begin to find strength within yourself in how you take your next step. So you can look at a counselor, you can look at a certified counselor, you can look at a mentor. If you have a mentor, you can talk to them in private, in confidence, but they have to be trusted people that you can that can help. And then obviously you can seek professional help. And today we are so blessed with the um with 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 all that we have online. Wherever you are in the world, you can still access psychological therapy services, talking therapies, wherever you are in the world, you can access people that would support you, that would help you. So I want to encourage you, don't, 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 don't lose hope. 
okay don't let don't just say this is where i'm old what's the point of going somewhere but you don't know what's going to happen a lot of people have said they, they you know i don't know how to get out of it and they've ended up six feet under which is a wasted life you know you can't you know those 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 people that have died because of abuse they're gone they can't impact anybody in this world they can't impact their children don't be a victim. I want to say to you, it is time for you to say, I'm coming out of that prison of fear and I'm coming out of abuse. Yeah, please be encouraged. And you can always contact um, Beautiful Mind to get some more information on how you can do it. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. We're here to help you and to make sure you lead a better life. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pastor Fola. Mm -hmm. um, Leona, I believe this woman is saying she is worried about who is going to marry her at our age and i i know you have a good news for us you 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 you've just got married you know i just want you to encourage this woman you know about our saying people will condemn her for not being patient and who will marry her at our age can you just share a word of encouragement please leona of course um firstly i just want to address this worry of, of the stigma of being stigmatized mm. your worth is not determined on other people's opinions That's of it. you you mm -hmm. you are not your identity is not formed by what others think of you they so don't worry about what anyone else thinks you're like pastor uh, has said your worth is so precious you deserve to live a life that not only brings you joy but you're able to 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 be everything that you want to be and not under the control of another person um and i want to encourage you yes so i was I, you may think I'm, I'm not quite old yet um <laughs> but i did feel at one point that i was left on the shelf and I, I was after getting out of that relationship i i was uh, uh, single for eight years and um and i am now married i got married in, during lockdown oh, uh, wow. in no in november we haven't had the big part yet but i'm married and do you know what he was worth the wait he respects hmm. me Wonderful. he treats me like a queen he 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 knows how to listen i'm allowed to communicate my own feelings they don't get uh, pushed aside i get you know he i'm allowed to friends i'm allowed to have discussions i'm allowed to disagree with him it's mm. healthy you know we, we can have confrontation Wonderful. but we're still valuing and respecting one another and we love one another that confrontation isn't an isn't an unhealthy thing but it's a really healthy thing because he knows what i'm worth and he values me and respects me so i would encourage you your worth is you know you're so precious i'm sure those around you will tell you how amazing you are and you don't deserve to live this life so get out and don't worry about what anyone else thinks their opinion does not make you who you are thank you thank you very much i can't but read what benedict that is samantha dali what she wrote down here she said i married my abuser the Jezebel spirit in him completely destroyed me. Mm. Wow. I'm very sure you are out of that relationship now. And I know that is why you are able to know that the Jezebel spirit was controlling you. You know, I, I just want to remind or share with somebody listening to us this afternoon. Mm. Please, there is a Jezebel spirit out there. And you might be thinking you are dealing with a human being, but you're, what you're dealing, what you're contending with is quite stronger and it's not physical. So please get help. Get help. This is what we're saying this afternoon. You have to know your what. That's something Lihona just reminded us of again this afternoon because you want something more than That's what you are experiencing now. Please. Do not suffer in silence because help is readily available. Leona, I'm coming back to you. What steps did you take? You know, I just want you to go with us quickly. We you know those steps that you took that time when you were repeatedly abused. What step did you take after your ex repeatedly abused you? How did you come out of it? Uh, so it was previously mentioned the final straw was when a... Um, a violent episode happened in front of my son and I was like 
this is not going to continue. I am not going to allow my son to be brought up in this. So that was the light switch moment that got me to get out of that relationship. Now, the getting free part was the biggest and scariest step. But the journey afterwards is what I would say to people is, you know, be patient with yourself and take time to work on yourself. So for me, I joined something called the Freedom Program. Now, this is um, something I would recommend any victim of abuse, emotional or violent, to go on in it. It's a program that actually helps you realize what you've actually been through. So we've talked a little bit about um, spotting red flags, but unless you know them, you don't know them. So, it, and like um, Bernadette commented, you need to know these like the back of your hand. So my advice would be work on yourself first. Learn how incredible you are, that someone else's opinion does not uh, define who you are. Learn to love yourself again. Build your confidence back up. Then learn what your boundaries are going to be. What you're not willing to accept in a relationship. Even write a list what you're not willing to compromise on in, in, a, in a future other half. And it, I tell you what, write that list. If they break it, don't fall back on it. It's, you know, you wrote it for a reason and you're not willing to accept a certain level of behavior from another person. Don't settle for it because know your worth and work on it. And there is so much support out there. Even the Freedom Program is online. There's, um, I'm, I'm sure there is other agencies in other countries that work towards helping victims of abuse. Seek out the advice, seek out the abuse. And like Pastor mentioned earlier, if you've got a trusted friend, um, help them journey with you let people in there is no shame in having gone through domestic violence and domestic abuse and um, it does not define who you are and uh, one thing I try and help people with is to 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 not um, to not live their lives as a victim for the rest of their life they are not yeah. defined by what they have been through they 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 can work get you know healed where it hurt the trauma and move mm. past it and start to learn just how incredible they are and build their self-worth up and but most importantly learn how to put in safe boundaries and what you're not willing to compromise on thank you thank you very much leona for that again i believe you can contact leona if you want to if you want her to work on this journey of self-discovery with you because she was able to do that with herself I believe she can do it with you and and if you want beautiful mind to to be involved as well and we work with other agencies as well that we can you know connect you with or refer you to so please do not suffer in silence pastor Fala. yes i am coming to you now does a lot of people have accepted this as as well, this is what God want me to be. This is my destiny. God want me to be in this abusive relationship. So I want you to help us this afternoon and say it openly because a lot of people are watching you and I know that a lot of people will still watch this video. Does God want anyone to stay in an abusive relationship? And whilst you're answering that, please, I, I you know, we mentioned the spirit of Jezebel. And I want you to help us. Some people might not know what the spirit of Jezebel is. If you can help us to give a very short description of the spirit of Jezebel as well, please. Okay. So um, I'm, I'm a Christian. So I'll take it from a Christian perspective. Uh, and I'm sure even those of our friends that are on the line that are Muslims or any other religion, they would have principles that guide us in how we behave to each other. So you do unto others as you want them to do unto you so in my in the bible you know um the bible describes clearly what love is if we go to first corinthians chapter 13 love is kind is gentle is patient it doesn't recall you know wrong you know so love is explained there what love is is not the affection and the feelings that we all sort of pursue when we didn't know what love is but love really is a choice. You choose to love the people in your life. And when you choose to love them, then you are able to demonstrate the attributes of that love, which is, like I said, kindness, gentleness, you know, long suffering, encouraging, and, you know, all those attributes are there. And then when I come to marriage now, the Bible describes the marriage relationship. It says it should reflect Christ's relationship with his church. 
of sacrificial love. That is the description of marriage in the Bible. It, 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 should, it should reflect the same relationship that Christ has with church. He died, shed his blood, sacrificial love, so he can rescue us. Okay, so it's very important. And I know, um, I think it's Ephesians 5.22. A lot of people tend to refer to, oh, wife, you must, you know, submit to your to your husband. And they use that as, a, you know, um, a yardstick to say, you must do what I say. No, that is not what it is. The same thing the Bible also says, husband, love your wife. You know, so whilst we respect our husbands, our husband has been given the mandate to love the man. I mean, to love the woman, to love the wife. That's what the mandate is. So I think it's important to make sure that we balance this. And by the way, when we're talking about abuse, it's happening everywhere. Pastors are abusing their wives, okay? So this is nothing to do with some people out there. In the kingdom, we have challenges with people that we, we, we they know better. They cancel other people, but they are also abusing their own spouses. Now, if you are listening to me on the line, I say again, there's help, okay? It's not the end of the world. You can get help, you know, but stop hiding behind, you know, this, um, I'm a pastor, I'm a bishop, stop hiding. We need to get help. We need to live better lives. Now, let's come to um, Jezebel. For those that do not know, there's a story in the Bible that talks about a, this lady who married a king of is a king of or in Israel, and she oppressed she oppressed the people through the king. She manipulated the husband who is the king. Um, she was not referred as a queen, so I'm not going to refer to her as a queen. Um, but she oppressed her husband, manipulated him, you know, made him do exactly what she wants with some supernatural powers. Okay, and so eventually she, uh, she she died a terrible death eventually. But however, there were so many people that died because of all the decisions and all the hatred and bitterness she brought into the nation of Israel. So when people say Jezebel, they're basically describing a very wicked woman, a woman that, you know, sort of oppressed and destroyed all, you know, all those that come close to her. She, her mandate was to to subject them to pain and to kill them. So it was very, a ruthless sort of life, a life that didn't give anybody any chance. So that is the meaning of Jezebel. And when people refer to that, that's the description. So I want to use this again to say, okay, we can no longer hide under any um, in accolades, you know, all this we're talking about, it happens across all this, you know, whether you're a celebrity, whether it's happening and it needs mm -hmm. to stop. We need to come to respect each other. We need to seek help, okay? We need to improve our emotional intelligence. You need to know how to understand your triggers mm. and how you're able to, you know, manage your anger, manage, you know, that, that, that outburst, you know, you need to, you can learn it and you can improve, you know, you can improve on it. So thank you. That, that, that's, yeah, thank you. That, that's thank what you. I want to say about that question, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma, for that. There is something, I love everything that you said, but there is something that is so dear to my heart when you said it. That even if you are a man of God and you're watching us, this woman, and you're suffering from these things that we're, we're discussing, Pastor Fala is saying, humble yourself and come out to say, I need help. Yeah. And you will be so glad you did because you will become a better person. You will become a, a better version of yourself yeah. and you will do exploits even yes. after, yes. Co you know, coming out to say, I need help. So please, there is no shame in this. There is no stigma in this. And that is what we're talking about it. So that to reduce the stigma, when people come out to say, I am an abuser, yeah. I've been abusing people that I, that I come in contact with. People will not shame you, but they will rather see it as a means of supporting you That's right. and making you to be the best that you can be. Mm. So please, there is no shame in it. If you need help, do not suffer in silence. Thank you. Ruth, you are saying congratulations. I want to know why. Who are you congratulating? I really want to know. Please. Please. Oh, are you saying congratulations to Leona? Wow. Please, thank you. We want to know. Right. And um, Leona, I'm coming back to you now. 
Leona, okay, Leona, we can't, maybe you need to rejoin, I don't know what happened, but I have a question for you now, please try to rejoin, she's saying our internet froze, wow, I have, an, the, my next question is for you, but I will go to Pastor Fola now, right, I have heard that a lot of people describe we blacks as being aggressive, do you think that, you know, they are misunderstanding us due to the to our cultural differences and the race that is contributing to the problems that people are ha having in their homes, in their marriages? Because some people believe, oh, because you're black, as a black man, it is acceptable to be aggressive. What do you have to say about that, please? Okay. Um, first, I just want to say out there that it's not acceptable to be aggressive. Um, where, whatever color, whatever tribe, whatever language that you speak. Um, I think aggression is aggression, okay? Um, when it's just aggression, whether physical, um, whether emotional that like we're discussing. So we are different, okay? We are different. And all you need to do is to, um, if you have the opportunity to go to Africa, I come from Nigeria, go into a market in Nigeria, and compare what you see to what you see in the market in, in the West, in the Western world. We're different people, okay? Um, we are, we have, we're made up, you know, in our, in our makeup, we are very spiritual people and we express ourselves with so much passion. So a lot of Africans like me, when I get excited, my voice, I, my, I just find that my voice sort of increases, the volume sort of goes up, yeah? That doesn't mean I'm aggressive. You need to listen to what I'm saying. When you listen to what I'm saying, um, then maybe you understand that this is not aggression. But we are different. And one of the things I want to say is it's high time that we start celebrating those differences in culture, differences in, in our tribes and our beliefs. It's time to accommodate everyone and stop judging. We should stop mm. judging each other, whether you're white, you're black, you're whatever mixed race. We are one. OK, we have one source. We are human beings. So it's important that we understand and celebrate those differences. So if someone is uh, is sort of very nasty, a nasty person, not kind, it's, it doesn't have a, you don't need any language for that. OK, you don't <laughs> need uh, I come from um, America. I come from, you know, Switzerland or I'm Chinese. They are unkind. We know how to identify love. And we know how to identify kindness. It's got nothing to do with color. It's got nothing to do with age or anything else. It's just your makeup. So I think we need to celebrate our differences. So I would say to you, yes, we do raise our voices because we are passionate people. And I suppose we have a lot of space in Africa to express our passion, for example. Maybe that's where it's come from. I don't know. <laughs> but mm. you cannot compare and then begin to say, oh, um, mother, mothers that are Nigerian are this, and and, and, the, and <laughs> the and the British Niger uh, mothers are this. No, we are different. We celebrate mm -hmm. those differences. However, there is aggression mm. that needs to be, um, you know, we, we need to stop, and there is kindness that we need to embrace. That is my, uh, you know, yeah. that's my take on that. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, I love something that Tawe. <laughs> Is it Tari or Tari, what she wrote here? She said, Mabel, my heart goes out to you. Be encouraged. You are fearfully and wonderfully created. Only, you know, you listen to this, please. You need not, you, you do not need another person to complete you. Marriage is not 50-50. It is 100-100. I pray you find your servant and someone you will, that will appreciate you for who you are, you are a red gem, yeah. or run for your life, you are what more than your children alive than dead. Wow, I love that. I love that, Tari. Thank you very much for writing that. I believe Mabel will be reading this, and please, if there are lots of Mabels out, out there as well, mm -hmm. don't think because we've not read mm -hmm. your story out, you know, you can't pick what is yours in here. I believe we have Leona back. Yes. Yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> well, Leona, it takes two to tangle. Mm -hmm. And a lot of women stay in their relationship because they believe that 
they are at some point you know being at fault it's their fault you know and that's why he's being aggressive that's why he's being emotionally abused to them will you say that at any point when you were with your ex will you say or will you say partly it was your fault for all his behavior or or the way he was treating you will you say it was your 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 behavior or partly your fault so um that phrase kind of like riles me up a little bit because <laughs> <laughs> like i've touched on it a little bit earlier but i think i think it takes two to maybe stay in choose to stay in a toxic relationship mm -hmm. but when it comes to um is, is is it the um victim's fault for any part in the violence that was brought towards them i think absolutely not mm -hmm. in like i mentioned a bit before that regardless of what my behavior is towards you you could choose to walk out the room that's right you could choose to not be in this relationship if you're not happy with my behavior i cannot control how you react and respond to me so uh, unfortunately you know this is uh this is sometimes how people approach victims of domestic violence oh you must have done something that mm. uh, caused this scenario oh they or maybe it's even they weren't like this with their last relationship it must be you no mm. that person the, per the perpetrator of the the abuse is fully in control uh, of their choices their exactly. actions their responses and they have chosen to behave in that way mm -hmm. so um i would disagree that the um that the victim is at fault or any behavior that's given towards them because that person has been in control of their own behavior but i would say you know hold it in tension that you know um the victim does have a choice as well you can get out you don't have to put up with that behavior and you can wow. choose choose to leave thank you thank you very much leona this is a tough one that i'm going to ask you you left that relationship and you went ahead to do you, you did a video to enlighten people on domestic violence that video went viral on facebook i don't know if you've not seen it you need to go and look for that video what where did the courage comes from because that's like years back and i don't think you are as confident as you are now then when you did that video where did you get that courage that and you know to to leave him that's the that's the first thing i want you to share with people where did you get the courage to leave that relationship and to do that video where did the courage come from um well at, at first the, the courage was uh was not my own it was an instinct to protect my child that's the first initial step that got me out of there but the courage to stay out of the relationship and not go back i i, I believe was due to my own personal faith um, you know, I know not everybody watching necessarily has the Christian faith, but me, myself, when I started to learn of my value and worth of what God created me to be, mm -hmm. that's my own personal um, belief. So when I thought my self-worth started to come up and I realized, hang on a minute, I don't deserve to be treated like that. And I'm not going to be treated like that anyway. Wow. But that's when the courage started to come in. And it was only when I was a place when I, you know, I was a few years removed from situation so like i can talk about the violence that i experienced as if i'm reading off information from a piece of paper because i feel i'm truly and utterly healed from that trauma mm -hmm. and that emotional pain that i can talk about it freely and it was a process that i came through of, of learning you know what i'm a nice person i don't deserve to be mm -hmm. like that i'm a catch you know <laughs> i would start to realize these things myself so i wouldn't i wouldn't then get end up in a really another relationship that didn't see what i was worth if that person didn't see what i was worth then there's the door mm -hmm. you, you, you know if you you don't value me or if you approach me in a certain way or you treat me without respect i'm, I'm sorry mm. go, goodbye um so, so the, the, the video do you know what i'll tell you an interesting fact about the video i felt really stirred that one evening after being in church i came home felt really stirred oh i've, I've had the idea to do that video for a while and I just felt stirred. I had to do it that evening. So I stayed up to like two in the morning. I wrote my messages on the board and I showed them to the camera. I had music playing and told Lori. And I posted it online straight away and went to bed. I woke up to hundreds of messages. And one particular lady said, who was in a completely different country, completely different time zone. And she said, I've just seen this 
at exactly the right time. It saved wow. her life. Yeah. She wow. said, and so and I, I um, I believe that my story is not my own. My story, that of, of you know, statistically speaking, it's like mm -hmm. uh, one in three, one in three people experience domestic violence. That's too high a number for me to be comfortable with. Yeah. And I, I just want to spread that you know, this is why I've written some blogs recently on how to spot red flags mm -hmm. or why mm -hmm. why people didn't leave it. Out. I mean, there's a lot more to come, but uh, I did that video to really just, you know, to go to put something out there that says you're not alone. You there is light at the end of the tunnel. You, there is light. Right. Wow! Yes. Wow! Thank you, thank you very much, Leona. And that is the, this is the reason why we're doing this again today to stir something up in ye, to let you know that you what more than you are going through. You what loads of beautiful things. You have great future. You what more than staying in an abusive relationship. You are all. Oh, you are complete. I just want to say thank you to your neighbor for 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 granting this. You know this this oh, for giving us this opportunity to be able to do this. Wow. Please, there is light at the end of that tunnel. You don't belong in there. You want more than that. Please, please. You know, Leona said something that she, when she realized, when she knew who she is, and today we are stirring up something in you. So we want to trigger something in you that will remind you of your what, that will remind you of who you are and whose you are. You are created for signs and wonder. You are created to, to multiply, to be fruitful. You are created to put a smile on somebody's faces and not to be a burden to somebody. No, that is not what you are created for. So get up. Get up. You can do it. You don't belong there. You what more than that. Wow, I'm really, really something stirred up in my spirit now after hearing that from you, Leona. Right, Pastor um, Fuller, some victims become paranoid and end up, you know, building barriers around themselves. You know, I want to ask that, is this the right way of doing things? And if they are building these barriers, how can they move forward? How can they let go? And how can they be the best version of themselves? Okay. That's a very important question. And um, first, I want to say that it's, it's, it's very difficult. It's not um, easy. And also, it's a process. Okay? You don't get there one day. Um, so first is about forgiveness. How do you get your mind? Because the journey of restoration starts with your emotional decision to let go mm. okay? it starts with that that mental decision to mm -hmm. let go okay and i want to say some few things that you know when you talk about forgiveness people tend to say oh you know does that mean the person gets away no forgiveness is not letting the offender off the hook okay mm. they will have to face the consequences forgiveness is returning to god <laughs> the right to take care of justice. So you're not going after the person. A lot of people are struggling with letting go. And so mm. they want, you know, to, they basically want to get that their own, you know, they, they want to get back at the person. Mm. They want to uh, vengeance. They want to take, you know, do what they've done back. But no, you need to let go of that. Forgiveness is not letting the offense we are caught again and again. So you don't put yourself in that same situation again that's not sort of forgiveness okay now forgiveness is not the same as reconciling because sometimes people think oh if i forgive so i need to, i can still hang I, I, if the, the 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 interpretation of forgiveness is i can i still hang hang about with the person that has abused me no you can forgive yeah but you don't need to keep company with them okay but why am i stressing forgiveness it's the first start of you getting your mental state back to where it should be, you know, mm -hmm. where you don't have any resentment, where you don't have any bitterness, and you don't begin to be like the person. Because if you don't let go, there's a high risk that you now become a, a total victim because you are behaving, you begin to behave in the same manner to the people that love you. And that is not where you want to be. 
So I always, when we start counseling, um, one of the things that we discuss, obviously at length, you know, is whether the, you're ready to start that process of restoration. You're ready to pray. You're ready to begin to read the Bible or any faith that you believe in to help for God to help you in that journey to get to the place where you feel much better and you can begin to heal gradually you know and i think we heard that from leona because she said our faith played a huge role because she handed it back to god yeah you handed back to god okay so forgiveness is a process it's not an event yeah okay so but you need to get your mind ready to begin to let go or else it's like it just eats you up and it doesn't get yourself back into the place where you need to be emotionally thank you thank you you, now how can a victim thought process be coached, you know, to have a beautiful mind towards themselves after the trauma you know, and, you know, after the trauma or the abuse, especially during this lockdown, you know, the victims are even at home with a, with a, with a, uh, and they are at the mercy of their yeah. abusers. You know, how can their thought process be coached and to, 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 in order to have a beautiful mind towards themselves? I think the, the the biggest hurdle at first is to get out of the mindset of being um, a victim. As in, like, if, when you're stuck as, I'm the victim, um, it's hard to move past that and you get stuck in the trauma and the, you know, you can relive flashbacks. You can, you, your self-esteem can be kind of stuck and living and at this oh I'm I'm just this this victim of abuse and that's all I am and that's all I'm worth so the first thing I tend to do is you know work on that side of things and in just um helping them see who they are beyond the abuse Mm -hmm. and start to uh you know um attack you know a a technique I used to use was was in regards to thoughts you know negative thoughts will come I would get flashbacks where it would just flood in front of me like a movie and I would for for a period of time I would actually speak out loud and I'd say no I'm not thinking about that and I would speak Hmm. to that flashback and I would it's caught you know those those watching who are Christian will have heard the phrase take captive of net of thoughts and that's where you're not allowing negative thoughts to swirl around in your mind and take up all that beautiful mind space and you know you i i I coach people into saying you know use your head as a filter Mm -hmm. you know you if a negative thought comes Mm -hmm. it's your choice whether you pull it into your heart or not or it's your choice whether you chuck them out it's your choice whether you agree with that negative thought and you know if a negative thought comes and goes you know, you're not worth anything and that's why you were treated that way. If you agree with that, you'll pull it into your heart and it starts to become part of you. But if you help someone who's been through this to to manage their thoughts, you can help them discover who they are and to start speaking out the truth of who they actually are. And when those negative thoughts, you can say, no, that doesn't define you. No, that's not what you deserve. And the biggest one is, no, it was not your fault. Mm. often you find that victims who have been through uh, abuse have somehow got conditioned into believing it must be my fault why else would I be experiencing this so and uh, I guess so firstly helping them get out of um, victim mindset helping them manage their own thoughts and to help build up their self-worth it's like I uh, mentioned a bit earlier if you spot someone's in that kind of situation don't go for the relationship because they'll be attached and more often than not they'll cling to the abuser and cut you out and because there's manipulation and mind games all at play here but if you start to tell that person do you know you're awesome do you know you're really pretty and start to build their own self-esteem that's their that's the you know the the biggest fight against uh, uh, emotional and domestic abuses is self-esteem if they know who they are they're not going to put up with that so you can start help them by make, seeing them, helping them see who they really are and not defined by other people's negative opinions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're coming to an end now, but I believe this few, about two questions are really, really important. Pastor Fallout, how can domestic abuse um, slash um, domestic victims 
you who have withdrawn because they must have had you know low self-esteem you know they don't have the value they don't know who they are you know they are depressed and they become low in confidence how can they get help how can they boost their confidence back to be in order to to know that they want more than that okay so I think the first thing um, is to get, you know, professional help because normally you have access to um, telephone lines. If you're in the UK, um, there's a um, there's a free phone number, and I'm sure you're going to be doing this as well, um, probably after this, that you can, refuge, that you can call. So it's always nice to get professional help. Um, like I said, there are, you know, talking therapy services as well that you can actually get um, psychological, you know, psychological help to talk about the situation because that will eventually begin to help you, you know, to um, understand yourself more and how you might want to tackle the situation. And, you know, like what you've heard with Leona saying as well, it's a, it's a process. It's not something that we can just say, uh, what, what, you know, somebody can say to you, why, why are you still there? Why can't you just get out? Mm. It's not as simple mm. as that, you know, because there's been a lot of commitment in the past. Remember what we're talking about here, the relationships always start with love. Nobody would ever marry somebody that's already beaten them up. No, it's always starts with love. You always, and then it sort of goes into a bad, you know, situation. So there's always um the the the, the, the um you know professional help that you can access and then also you know whatever like i said before always try to talk to a trusted friend somebody that would help to you know you can sort of express your concerns express how you feel you know to them it's 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 achievable you know leona is here today she's written a book She's got a video. Well, some blogs. The book's going to come later. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm saying that to you that I thought you'd written. So read about those that have come out. You know, do some research. Get some information about those that are also doing that, gone through the experiences, and they've come out of it. It's, it's always inspiring when you listen to people that have overcome a situation. It helps you as well to know you can do it. So I just want to encourage you, you know, again, pastors are there. You know, you have good pastors that can help you. In, and leaders in the communities as well that can help you, that are trusted to be confidential, you know, to support you. And what are they going to be doing? They're just going to listen. Mm. They're just going to listen and listen and listen and help you because the decision at the end of the day, that decision is going to be yours. That mm. decision is not going to be somebody else's decision. You will make that decision yourself. So the help that you're getting is just a safe environment where you can talk about the situation where you can be listened to, where you're not condemned, where you're mm -hmm. not, you know, you're not ridiculed, but you have an, a, an objective, you know, opinion to just encourage you to know how you will navigate your way out. But the decision is yours. Nobody yeah. will force you to make any, any decision. You have to make that decision and help is here. Okay. There's even financial help for people. Exactly. There's there's, there's so much to access. Mm -hmm. Some people yeah. get trapped in because of finances. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's spot on. You're absolutely spot on, Leona. Thank you very much, Pastor Fowler, for that. Mm -hmm. Right. This is the last question for the night. Leona, how can the victims of emotional abuse put a stop? I know Pastor Fowler said it is the decision. You know, nobody's going to force them. And like we have been saying, we're not forcing you out of your relationship. But if you are experiencing what we've discussed here today, we believe you need to seek for help. That is what we are saying. You know, sometimes separation, we're going to talk about that next week. Separation is not the end of the world and it's not the same as divorce. Yeah. So sometimes that is what is needed. But, Leona, how can the victims of emotional abuse put a stop to it, even in this lockdown, and get help? So if if they're still in a relationship and, um, yes. you know, they don't, they don't necessarily need, want to leave that relationship, there are certain things you can do. If the other person is willing to openly communicate about things and are willing to discuss the relationship in a healthy way then there is a possibility of a way forward there's um there's i know there is courses out there for for um, perpetrators of abuse to help help um them manage their side of things i think one thing they can do to help put a stop to emotional abuse is, is boundaries 
um, what they're willing to uh, accept and what they're not willing to uh, accept and to be able to communicate that in a way that, do, you know, do, I'm saying don't put yourself in in uh, harm's way. But if you're able to have a discussion with the other pass, person and say, you know, in that moment, this is how it made me feel and communicate what you need. I need to feel such and such sometimes there's cases of emotional abuse where the perpetrator hasn't even realized that they're doing it you know not not all perpetrators of emotional abuse are you know the devil it it can be they they've had their own experiences and their own trauma and i'm not excusing their behavior but they if people are in a relationship and they feel like there is a way forward there you know there i would encourage them to discuss safely and to communicate what how they're experiencing their other person and if there's a way forward and the key thing to recognize is if if you if you do have those conversations and the other person completely denies all responsibility then that is a major red flag if they're not willing to um hear your feelings if they're not willing to acknowledge your feelings if they're not willing to take any responsibility for their own actions and turn the blame all onto you then that is a major red flag and i don't think you'll be able to have a way forward if they're unable to take responsibility and if so one of the red flags that i've named in my blog is called defense defcon one it means their defense level is just everybody else is to blame except themselves mm. it can't possibly be anyone else's fault but themselves no that's a major red flag it means you can't how can you discuss how you're feeling or how the other person's made you feel if they're not willing to hear it or accept any responsibility so if they if you can see that there's a possibility that they're open to discussing things and taking responsibility and then taking actions to rectify their behavior then there is a way forward if there's not then i would you know seriously um revisit why you're in that relationship very much thank you to both of you you've done really really well and i believe our viewers and our listeners will not remain the same they will pick what is necessary what is theirs in all that has been discussed this afternoon but before we we say bye finally can you give like a word of advice you know one minute from both of you first of all do you want to go first please okay i really this is an area of my passion as well regards to how we're bringing up our children and i think i just want to say every parent you have the responsibility to make sure that you give a balanced environment for the children to develop mm -hmm. their emotional intelligence. You need to empower them. You need to tell them how wonderful they are. They don't need um, another voice externally to them to know uh, that they're beautiful, that they're handsome. I think all the, what we've been talking today, it's about how we have also been brought up to deal with the challenges of life. This is just a challenge of life in, in most cases. You know, but how we fortify our children now, not later, so please encourage, empower, let our daughters have self-worth from now, from the age of two, they should have self-worth. They know who they are, tell them they're beautiful, tell them they're great, so they don't fall into the hands of the wrong people. They don't start wrong relationships, you know? It all starts from there, you know? And if you do need help, you know, because of the environment that you're in right now with your children, you can always find help as well. If you find that some traits that you're seeing in your children that you think you need to get some support, whether you're reading, whether you're going to conferences, find help and get yourself to the point where the children are rounded, they have confidence in themselves, they have self-worth from a young age, and they will make the right decisions. Thank Amen. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Leona, from somebody that I've been through it, what advice will you share with somebody that is in need now or somebody that has come out of it, please? Uh, get out. <laughs> <laughs> get out. Your life is worth more. Work on your self-worth. Know what your um, boundaries are and do not compromise on them. That's really, really short and simplified version of know who, what you're worth and don't let anyone treat you any less than you deserve. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Short and sweet. Get out, get help, get free. Be awesome. Thank you. Yeah, great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I hope if we 
do invite you another time you will say yes to beautiful mind <laughs> thank you yes. very much thank you for having you. us thank so you. much thank so, you i do really um, appreciate it it, w will you be posting some helpful links for people i can yes, yes we so. will. i believe you you've just started a charity um leona do you want to let people know what is it that you do now so that they can contact you um you sure <laughs> the, yeah so um we i i also run a, a charity called papa's house which is uh, based in nepal the poster behind me we rescue abandoned street children out in Nepal there's no social services out there to help them and we want to make a dent in child uh, slavery and child sex trafficking we rescued our first girl last year which is uh, very difficult to do because they get snatched so quickly so if you want to know more if you can even help us and um, visit www.pappashouse.org.uk now if you want to read my blogs on the um the red flags to spot to avoid before you even start um dating and and look um forward to way more blogs um it's www.fearlessone.org.uk and you, you can uh comment on blogs or anything any questions there you can reach uh, reach me there thank you Oh, and Thank there's helpful you. links as well. So actually, yeah. on, I put it on that website. There's a page, the, at the bottom of the page, there is links to help. Oh, that's great. That would be great. Um, Ruth is saying, Thank you so much, beautiful mind, Pastor Fola and Leona. We will continue to normalize these conversations mm. that no one should be ashamed to ask for help or get help when needed. Thank you very much for that. You know, that is why we are doing this because we need to stop that stigma around it. When somebody said they've been through abuse or they are going through it, you don't need to think it's because they're not praying enough. No. Mm. It's because they've yeah. done something evil and God is trying to catch up on them. Or it's mm. because they're not patient enough. Mm -hmm. It's because they're not a wise woman because wise women build their homes. We need to stop saying That's all cool. of these things to our women. Thank you very much, Ruth, for that. Pastor Fola, I believe you have a fantastic job that you're doing in, in uh, Milton Keynes. Can you let us know some of them? I know I've been, you, you do some work, you know, you, oh, are you work or something. Yes, <laughs> yes. And I like to encourage people because if you are a Christian, um, the time with God, your personal engagement with God actually heals. It heals the hurt, it heals, mm -hmm. it heals the pain. And um, if you go on www.womanatbethany.org.uk, I've published a lot of prayer work, intentional prayer work um, books, prayer books. And they're for you to go on the walk and meditate on Bible verses and it heals, it brings healing, okay? It's a time, it's a personal engagement with you and your maker. Okay, this is for anybody, whether you're Muslim, whether you can go on that website and grab one of the uh, prayer walk, um, you know, books. It really, really makes a lot of difference. It, it's all about transformation, healing. When we've gone through trauma, don't just get up and go. You need to stay there for a while and be healed and get your healing so that when you come out, you're coming out with flying colors. You're calling, coming out wow. just like a owner ready to take the world <laughs> she's got our healing and she's she's ready to go so please that's what i do is woman woman um w-o-m-a-n um uh, at bethany one word dot org dot uk so you can access what that's what i do i do a lot of spiritual exercises but a lot of it is about how we can have be in conversation with god get our healing from god directly okay it's not about religion it's about you your, your personal relationship with Jesus and it will heal us and make us new. So you can join Thank us you. anytime on the programs. Thank yes. you, Ma. Thank you to both of you. I do really appreciate it. I just want to let people know that, you know, help is available. So please, if you have been affected by everything that we've discussed here today or anything at all that we've discussed here today, please do get in touch with us. And I can guarantee you that we will counsel you, we will work with you, we will be with you, we will coach you. And if we cannot do it ourselves, 
we will signpost you to the right agencies yeah. that will support you. So please do not suffer in silence because help is readily available. Beautiful Mind is giving free mask. So please, if you live in the in our neighborhood, Levin Jim Gordon, please come and get your free mask so that we you can protect yourself and your loved ones. Right, I want to say thank you to you, Mark you know, for giving us the funding that we're able, we're able to, you know, show love to you, our women during the Valentine's um, that just passed. Thank you very much, Mac, for your support. We do really appreciate. Near neighbor, thank you. Without you, we wouldn't have been doing this. So we want to say thank you for your support. Thank you for your contribution as well. You can still watch my movie, The Great um, Greatest, on YouTube whilst you're there now. You can just go and please subscribe, subscribe and press on that button that will remind you once we post our new video. So please, once this beautiful time is where you get a notification, so please put that notification button on. And don't forget, you can watch Sailing Point as well. Wink Lashes, yes, and we have a baby that is coming, Wink Royale. If you want to know more about that, please get in touch with me. We're going places this year, this 2021, and COVID-19 can never stop us, and it will not stop you as well. Be beautiful, renewer of mind, my book. Please go on my website, www.beautifulmindonline.org, and get yourself a copy, and you can also get for your loved ones. It is a book that will be like your, you know, your daily devotion book that you just want to hold dearly to your heart and you wouldn't even want to give to anybody you know and that's why i tell people get one and get one for your loved one thank you very much please continue to keep safe continue to abide with the government you know guidance by protecting yourself and your loved ones wear your mask wash your hands use an hand sanitizer if you need to and don't go out if you're in uk if you don't have to go out for only the essentials we've not finished our domestic violence next week is another time for you to meet with us and next week i know a lot of people have been sending messages already when are you talking about domestic violence and the religious places or the church we want to hear what the pastors have got to say about domestic violence they keep telling people stay in the marriage is because you're not patient well next week will be another time so please stay tuned till next day i want to say thank you to my producer ay the ambassador for putting all of this together and to all of you because without you there wouldn't be beautiful mind thank you very much for always you know having a date with us is so so gracious i'm so excited anytime it's time for beautiful mind we have viewers you know, so thank you. Thank you very much. On to next week when I will be bringing another informative and educative topic your way. I will remain your host, Ade Inkadeomi. Bye for now. Please share this video. <laughs> Bye. Love you all. Love you.